What's up YouTube, Daniel Carter at Afro Herb Keeper here. Uh, today I'm with my Hog Island Boa Constrictor Scylla, and we are going to be showing you how to properly set up any species or subspecies of Boa Constrictor in an 18 by 30 by 24 vision cage. Scylla's looking like she wants to get back home, so without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> As it stands right now, my boa, Scylla, is being housed in a standard 20 gallon aquarium. Now this is fine for baby boa constrictors, but Scylla has far outgrown this size setup. Though she is a dwarf subspecies of boa, um, she still does get quite large at about 7 feet. And though she still has a few feet to go, she is about twice the length of this front panel of glass, which means that it is definitely time to get her in something a bit larger. In her setup right now, she is on a substrate of cypress mulch with numerous pieces of grapevine in the back there and two hides, a warm hide, which is just a little white cave, and a cool hide, which is this half log. In the back there, she's got a little water dish. On the top of her tank, because boa constrictors are excellent escape artists, I've got a couple bricks. These just serve the same function as a lock. Um, I don't have any sort of lock on this cage. There are 20 gallon tanks such as this one, which include a locking mechanism in the top, but she was not in one of those. So the cage we're going to be putting her in today is much more suited to a boa constrictor. It's the second one in this stack in the middle of the frame. The cage on the bottom here houses blue, my Argentine black and white tegu, and the one at the very top houses kosho, my blood python. As evidenced by this sign here, this cage was formerly the house of my blue tongue skink, but uh, for ease of access, since I've got one constrictor in here, I'm going to be putting Scylla in here and moving the skink to a larger enclosure. Just to be a bit more specific, this is a vision fiberglass cage. It's got a sliding glass panel in the front uh, and room for a lock mechanism, although I don't have one installed right now. Um, there's a little bit of ventilation in the back there, but other than that is completely enclosed, which means holds humidity pretty well. For this setup, we are going to be using a mixture of two substrates. One, EcoEarth, which is a form of coconut core, compressed coconut fiber, which you can expand using water. And two, forced floor bedding, which is a natural mix of cypress mulch. This stuff is ready right out of the bag, but our coconut core will require a bit of preparation. As it says here, we're gonna place one brick into a container of our choice. In this case, I'm using just a large metal bowl um, we're going to add four quarts of water and we're going to let that sit for about 20 minutes. Now that both of our substrates are ready, I'm going to be using a mix of about 40% coconut core, 60% forced floor bedding. And we're just going to take all of this and dump it right in there. Spread all this around. This is a very messy process, so don't be afraid to get a bit dirty. All right, our substrate has been mixed and patted down. I think it looks pretty good. Some people might say that with loose substrate like this that impaction could be an issue, and impaction is when an animal ingests too much of a foreign material and it clogs up their digestive system. Uh, this could be an issue for an animal with health issues or an animal uh, whose prey items get covered in dirt or sand or other contaminants. But I intend to be feeding Scylla on a uh, platform of some sort. I do that with most of my snakes. So there is very little chance she will be ingesting any of this substrate. If we move around to the back of the system here, we can see numerous cables leading up into the bottoms and interiors of the cages. This is just a medium Zoomed heat pad, and that is all the heating Scylla's going to need for this entire enclosure. They don't need a basking light, they don't need UVB light, they only need a source of belly heat, and that is provided perfectly by a Zoomed heat pad. You can also use Zilla. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using any of the store brands, but this stuff works perfectly fine in my experience. Now it's time to add back in all of our uh, hard pieces. We've got a large ceramic water bowl. I upped the size on this a bit just so she can fit in the entire thing. Um, a white cave, a half log, and three nice looking pieces of grapevine. 
the white cave is the one she spends the most time in. So I'm going to create a bit of a uh, dugout under here to get her a bit closer to that heat pad. There's only one, so it shouldn't really overheat at all. Um, she should be just fine. And we're going to plop that in place. So that will be her warm hide. Her cool hide, this half log, I'm going to put in the back right corner. And like I did with the cave, I'm going to dig a little bit of the substrate out just so I can tilt this back a bit and create sort of a cave. As you can see, I've used some of the extra substrate to bury the end of this, which should give her a much more enclosed hiding spot. Finally, the water dish. I have a well, so I've filled this with filtered well water. Um, presuming you don't have one of those, I would use um, spring water or distilled water to fill your snake's water bowls. Tap water probably won't kill them, but there are a lot of additives. Depending on where you live, there could be chlorine or even lead in your water, and that is certainly not good for your animals. Now that all the essentials are in place, we can play around a bit uh, when placing our wood pieces. And not only does this stuff make the enclosure look more natural, it also encourages natural activities like climbing, exploring, all sorts of fun snake things for fun snakes to do. It's a bit of a maze in here, but I think that should work to our advantage. That should keep her thoroughly enriched and thoroughly entertained. So, without any further ado, I think it is time to introduce Scylla to her new home. She is getting very big. Uh, this girl, I believe, is about to reach four and a half, maybe five feet. Um, and if you're wondering, I feed her once every week or every other week, and I feed her one uh, frozen thawed medium rat every feeding. She is uh, always very particular when it comes to getting back in her cage. But it certainly looks like she is getting some use out of that cool hide. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, or subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. I try to get back to as many comments as possible.